the sun offers us a large amount of energy and it's shame not to use it as much as possible. Passive solar heating is a great source for heating for free. The sun's rays shine through the windows of the house and heat it up. This protest can be stretched up by accumulation form. Today will be the third day that we will not heat up our racket stoves since the end of the February. This all thanks to the sun and clay. The principle of passive solar heating consists in the use of solar energy without other active systems such as solar panels. For optimal use, a suitable design of the house and its internal arrangement is required. World sites, heat accumulation, insulation and the layout of the house's surroundings are also taken into account. Large glass walls are installed in the house, especially on the south side of the house, to use sunlight during the day. Heat storage helps maintain a stable temperature when the lights are off and insulation helps reduce heat loss away from the house. We have a glazed south part of the house plus two side windows, to the west and east. We wanted them here for a greater amount of light, but they also proved very useful for a relaxing place by the windows. The windows on the south wall start 50 cm above the floor and are 2.5 meters high. They are ordinary double glazed walls. There are ventilation holes between the windows and the ceiling. The front wall of the house also has two entrance doors, which are also partially glazed. The windows are vertical to the ground. For a more efficient use of the sun in autumn and winter, it would be advisable to have the glass title, but this is not of much importance in our area of the Central Europe, because there is not so much sun during the period when a lot of heating is needed. In general, there are very few sunny days in our area during autumn and winter, at least from November to January. The situation improves since February. The house is partially covered with clay from the three directions as well insulation. The walls of the house are made of clay, so they accumulate heat and when heating is needed, they gradually release heat into the space. They gradually cool down, but in the spring they start to warm up again. The floor is also clay and black basalt stones are laid on top of the clay in most of the house, which together with the clay below also accumulate and subsequently release heat. We wanted basalt here because it does not overheat during accumulation like granite cubes, but maintains a pleasant temperature. Originally, there was no greenhouse in front of the house, but after some time we added a greenhouse to the house from the south, which is not actively heated, but only acts as an impact zone against the wind, which would take heat from the house. The greenhouse has a glazed southern wall, there are only single glass and the roof has transparent polycarbonate. The greenhouse heats up very much when the sun shines and then heats up the sun, so we can have the doors open, which makes it warm and airy at the same time, even if it's freezing outside. What are the temperatures like at our home? The comfortable temperature for us in winter is 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. However, I would like to mention that 20 degrees Celsius here is something different than 20 in the stone house in which we lived before. 23 degrees Celsius is already quite warm here. During the 22 to 23 heating season, we did not heat several times thanks to passive heating. From January, there is usually at least occasional sun, so the greenhouse and the house warm up nicely. I can give the most recent example with the temperature. At the end of February and start of the March of this year, we didn't heat in rocket stove for four days in a row. The sun was shining, it was 23 degrees Celsius at noon at home and 24 in the afternoon in the back of the house. In the hallway it was 26 degrees Celsius and the same in the greenhouse. At the same time we had doors open the whole day. Today is already the fourth day that we will not heat in the stove. Great for the beginning of the March, hmm? Solar heating has several advantages. First of all, the cost of heating the house will be reduced. 
renewable source is used, so such heating is clearly sustainable. No pollutants or particles are released into the air, and there is no need for anything other than a suitable adaptation of the house. No wiring, because if the design of the house is adapted to solar heating, then the house is heated evenly and in the areas where it is needed. But we will also encounter disadvantages. It already follows from the nature of the functioning that there is a dependency on the sun. If the weather is not suitable, this heating does not work. In the Central Europe, we also have a problem with a small number of sunny days per year. November is generally the darkest, but since February the sun has been in it. With our earth chip, we originally thought that the heating in the stove would only be a supplement to the heating by the sun, but in reality it is the opposite in the end. Solar heating is only an accessory but functional. You must also have a suitably adapted house. With windows only to the north, you will not succeed much in this concept. It is also necessary to take into account the surroundings of the house, so that the shadow of, for example, a tree does not fall in the places where the sun should warm. Another disadvantage is that you can't set solar heating on the thermostat. The sun just heats up and you can just limit it. But you can take actions to keep the sun out of the house when you don't want to. For me, passive solar heating is important for self-sufficiency and sustainability, because such heating works by itself. We just prepare a suitable environment and then we no longer have to take care of it. We are then just consumers of such an efficient system.